Hi Maze, and welcome to Secret Pants, where I feature modern faux fur crochet patterns. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this super fun crochet cat stocking. Or the, So this is a little crochet fish for all your cats um, that you love for Christmas. And so this is the um, version that has the little fin. And then you can also um, open it up and it is functional. So that is super fun. And then you can also make this stocking. Um, with the bobbles like my other stockings have been. So this is the um, dog bone stocking that I released last week and you can see that it has the bobbles and so I did it matching or you can do the fin if you choose. And then you can also make the large dog bone stocking pattern and I'll put a link down in the description box for all of these down below. And then you can also, I'm going to be releasing very very soon the small or the large cat stocking or fish stocking fish slash cat stocking um, very soon on my Etsy site and we'll see maybe a YouTube video I'm not sure yet and so make sure you're um, you stay tuned for those and so let's get started making these small cat stockings Jumbo in the color um, burgundy. You don't need much of this ball of yarn actually at all. Um, and this is, um, you can use any number four. This is a number four worsted weight yarn, um, but you can use really any number four worsted weight yarn that you want. So that's the yarn that I'm using. And then I'm also going to use Lion Brand Gopher Faux in the color um, ch chinchilla. I'm probably saying that wrong, but uh, whatever. And this is what the yarn looks like. So it has a black. Um, like a black strip, and then the faux fur comes off of that. So I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. Okay, now I'm also going to use um, scissors, obviously, a darning needle just to sew in my tails or weave in my tails. Then I recommend having two stitch markers just for using the faux fur yarn. It just makes it a whole lot easier. And then I'm also going to use a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And I absolutely love Clover more, and so that's what I'm going to be using. Now to begin, what you're going to do is you're going to um, chain 18. So you're going to make a slip knot, and to make a slip knot, you just wrap your yarn around your finger twice, take the back loop, bring it to the front, take the new back loop, and bring it up and over, and tighten. Now I'm going to chain 18, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, now for row number one, what you're gonna do is, and I wanted to note real quick, that all turning chains, um, I, um, when I design my patterns, I really don't like counting turning chains as a stitch, and so all turning chains do not count as a stitch. So you're going to skip your first two um, chains, and you're going to double crochet three into your third chain from hook. So um, your loop and your hook does not count as a stitch. You're going to skip the first two chains and then you're going to insert your hook into the second or the third chain and you're going to make a double crochet and then you're going to do that three times. So you're going to make three double crochet into the first stitch. To make a double crochet you just yarn over, insert into the chain, yarn pull through, yarn pull through two, then yarn over, pull through two. So I just do three stitches, three double crochets into that one chain. Now you're going to double crochet in each stitch across and then you're going to double, or that would be 14 stitches, and then you're going to double crochet three into the last chain two. And so I'm going to just complete that and then I'll meet you back once I'm done with row number one. All right, so I just finished row number one and I did three double crochets into the last stitch, as you can see. And now um, you should have 20 stitches for row number one. And now what you're gonna do for rows number two and three, you're going to chain two and turn your work and then you're gonna just double crochet in each stitch across. So that's um, for rows two and three, just double crochet in each stitch across and then I'll meet you back once you are done with this. And I forgot to mention anything, but we are currently making the back panel and then we'll make the front panel and then we'll crochet the two together. And so we're making the back panel first. Okay, so I just finished rows number two and row number three. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to chain two um, and you should obviously have 20 stitches across once again. 
um, like rows, row number one was. Now for row number four, you're going to chain two, turn your work, and you're going to um, double crochet three into the first stitch. So, whoops. So do three double crochets into the very first stitch. And remember, all turning chains do not count as a stitch. So um, you're going to do three double crochets into the first stitch, and then you're going to double crochet in each stitch across, and then you're going to three double crochet increase, or do, do, do three double crochets into the last stitch again, too. So just double crochet in each stitch across, and then I'll meet you back on the other side. Okie dokie, so I just finished row number four, and you should have um, 24 stitches. Now I'm going to chain two and turn my work, and rows five, through nine, you're going to double crochet in each stitch across, and you should have 24 stitches. So we're kind of now at the main part of our, um, the widest part of our fish, and then we're gonna, um, after that, start decreasing to make it narrower for the point of the fish. Okay, so do um, rows five through nine, and just double crochet in each stitch across, and I'll meet you back. All right, so I just finished row number nine, and as you can see, it's starting to come together. Now what you're gonna do, for row number 10 is you're going to chain two once again and turn. And you're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches or over the first three stitches. So to do that, what you do um, is you yarn over, insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then you're going to do that. So basically we almost finished the double crochet. Normally you would yarn over and pull through two, all two loops and you would be done with the double crochet. What you're going to do instead, though, is you're going to insert yarn over and insert into the next stitch. Yarn and pull through, yarn and pull through two. So we have now two halves parts of a double crochet. And then you're going to do that one more time. So three, you should have four loops on your hook. There you go. I think it's focusing pretty good. And now what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook. And now you're going to double crochet in the next um, four, 18 stitches across, and then you're going to double crochet three together in the last three stitches. And so I'm just going to meet you back once you have finished row number 10. Okie dokie, so I just finished row number 10, and as you can see, we're just beginning to kind of taper in. And now you, you should have 20 stitches across, yep. Um, and now for row number 11, you're going to chain two once again, like we always do, our good old trusty chain two and turn. And then you're going to just double crochet in each stitch across. Now, I just thought of explaining this to you, but if you want to, you could chain three to turn your work. However, I like to chain two because when we go to sew the two panels together, it makes there makes it makes there be less gaps um, and less holes. So that's why I just chain two. And in general, I just tend to like to do that because it just makes it a little bit more neat, I feel like. So now I'm just getting crochet, uh, for row number 11, I'm just getting crochet, uh, double crochet across, and I'll meet you back. Okay, so you just, um, so we just finished double crocheting across um, for row number 11, and so I just finished row number 11, and you should have 20 stitches um, across, and now we're gonna do another decrease row. So we're kind of doing, at this point right here, we just did a decrease, now a plain double crochet row, and now we're gonna do another decrease row. You're going to chain two and turn for row number 12, and you're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches, double crochet in the next 14 stitches across, and then double crochet in the uh, three together in the last three stitches. So I'll meet you back once I've finished row number 12. All right, so as you can see, we got a really nice roundness kind of going. Um, and now what you're gonna do, so this is row number 12 that we just finished. You should have 16 stitches across, and now you are going to chain two and turn your work. And for row number, let's see, 13, you're going to just do the basically the exact same thing. So row 13, 14, and 15, you're going to do the exact same thing. So you're just getting double crochet three together in the first three stitches. You're getting double crochet across, and then you're getting double crochet three together in the last three stitches. So then you're going to do that for the next three rows. So you should have we had 16 stitches now, you'll have 12 stitches for row number 13, 8 stitches for row number 14, and 4 stitches for row number uh, 15. And so I'll meet you back once I finish those 3 rows of just decreasing at the edges. Okie dokie, so as you can see, 
Um, I just did three rows of decreases and now we are down to just four stitches left. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to chain two again and, oops, chain two and turn your work. And you're just going to double crochet four together in the last four stitches. So you just do the same thing you've been doing for your double crochet three togethers. You're just going to do that with one more stitch. So yarn over, insert, yarn pull through, yarn pull through two. And then you're just going to insert into the, yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn pull through, yarn pull through two. Insert into the next stitch, yarn pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And then do that in the next stitch. So now you should have five loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops. And there is your back of your fish stocking. I think it turned out quite cute. And now I'm going to cut my yarn. And I'm going to begin, um, you're going to begin the front panel. Okay, so I'm sorry, I was actually wrong. So now what you're doing, so we have the back panel done. As you can see, this is what it should look like. And now what you're gonna do is you're going to do the faux fur and you're gonna put it right onto the back panel. So what you're gonna do to do that is you're just going to go into the chains that we um, used to begin this fish. So here you can see the chains and then here's where we ended. And you're just going to insert into these chains. So what you're gonna do is I like to start right where my tail was just because I feel like it just makes it easier and it's just, that's where I insert. So you're gonna insert your hook right where your tail was into the very first chain. So right there. And now you're going to grab your faux fur yarn. And there's many different kinds of faux fur yarn that you could use, I'm sure. But this is the yarn that I'm using. And you're just going to, how I start using this yarn is I just yarn over, pull through, and then I'm gonna chain two. And for row number one, you're gonna three double crochet, do three double crochets into the very first chain. So right where we, or yeah, right, uh, very first chain stitch right here. And you're gonna go, uh, we just did our chain two out of it and you're just gonna go right back into that same one and you're going to do three double crochets. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend putting a, uh, not a double crochet, a stitch marker um, at your on your first stitch just so that you know that that's your first stitch, especially when you're using a smaller hook like we are. Um, it just really, really, really helps. You'll have, you'll thank me later, trust me. So. I'm gonna do three double crochets into the very first stitch. And so one, two, and three. And now you're just going to double crochet in the next 14 chain stitches kind of things. And then you're just going to double crochet three into the last chain stitch thing. Um, and so I'm just gonna do that. And you should have 20 stitches at the end of row one and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I just finished row number one and I have 20 stitches, so we are good. And now for row number two, you're going to chain again, chain two again, and turn your work. For row number two, you're going to do three double crochets into the very first stitch. And I'm going to add a stitch marker now on this side where my first stitch is. And then I'm going to do two more double crochets into that same exact stitch. So three double crochets into the very first stitch. And now I'm going to um, double crochet in the next five stitches. So one, two, you kind of have to be careful with this. I go a little bit slower just so I'm not, make sure I'm not skipping stitches. And I definitely recommend counting your stitches at the end of your rows, just to make sure that you're doing it all right. Because it's very, very easy to mess up. Okay, one, two, three, those were the first three. And then now I'm going one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so I just finished my five stitches. Now in, I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. So one and in the next stitch, two, two. And then I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. I'm going to double crochet in the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and one last one, five. 
And then I'm going to do three double crochets into the very last stitch. And you should definitely have a stitch marker here. So that should be your very last stitch you're going to work into. So I'm going to do three double crochets into there real quick on camera. I'm on two and oop, there we go, three. Now for row number three, you're going to chain two and turn your work again. And you're going to double crochet in the first eight stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, single crochet in the next four stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, and double crochet in the last eight stitches. So I'm gonna just do that on camera with you guys just so that you guys don't forget what to do next. So I'm going to move my stitch marker real quick and I'm going to begin by half double or double crocheting in the first eight stitches. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, oop, there you go, and eight. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. Now one tip with working with faux fur yarn is don't crochet super tight um, because if you do, it'll just make it harder to get into those stitches. So I just single crochet in, so I half double crochet in the next two stitches, then you single crochet in the next four stitches. Now I'm half double crochet in the next two stitches. So double crochet in the first eight stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, single crochet in the next four stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, and then double crochet in the last eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, right here. If I can get in there, there we go. And now you should have 24 stitches for row number three. Now for row number four, you're going to chain two and turn your work, and you're going to double crochet in, um, double crochet three together in the first three stitches. So I'm just going to do my double crochet three together like we've done before with the regular yarn. And I'm going to put my stitch marker right there. And then I'm going to, um, let's see, I'm going to double crochet in the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, and five, and then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. Like we've kind of done this before, so we're kind of making a little indent for the fish's tail. So I just single crochet in the next four stitches, then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. Then I'm going to double crochet in the next five stitches once again. Two, three, I'm starting three, and four, and five. And now I'm going to double crochet three together in the remaining three stitches. And you should have 20 stitches at the end of row number four. So this is what your stocking should look like. And you can kind of stretch it, pull it, uh, adjust it, kind of what you like it to look like. And now what you're gonna do is for row number five, you're gonna chain two and turn your work again. You're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches again, double crochet in the next three stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, single crochet in the next four stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, double crochet in the next three stitches, and double crochet three together in the last three stitches. So I'm gonna do that on camera once again. I'm sorry, this video is probably gonna be kind of long, but I want it to be very, um, very well done. So double crochet in the first three stitches. I'm gonna move my stitch marker. I'm going to um, double crochet, so double crochet three together in the first three stitches. Now I'm going to double crochet in the next three stitches, just plain double crochets. And then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches. And then I'm going to single crochet in the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. Then I'm going to half double crochet in the next two stitches and double crochet in the next three stitches. 
two and three. And then I'm going to double crochet three together in the remaining three stitches that are left for this row. And now you're going to be, you're officially done with the faux fur on the back of your panel. Now, one thing that you're gonna do for, um, you're gonna do technically one more row, but it's not really a row. So you should have 16 stitches across at the end of row number five. And now for row number six, you're going to double, or er, chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And I like to turn my work um, you can uh, turn your work, then chain 10, or chain 10, and then turn your work. Either way is totally fine. And now what you're going to do is you're just going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of, so right there, into the, basically it's kind of the same stitch that you just your, did your chains out of. So slip stitch into that stitch, and there is your little loop that you can then hang this on off your mantle or wherever you want to hang this off of. Now I'm going to grab my scissors. <clears throat> cut my yarn and then tie off. Now that is what it should look like and you can see our fish little fishy is coming together and so now I'm going to move on to the front panel. All right so for the front panel you're going to once again grab your red yarn or whatever color yarn you're using and you're going to make a slip knot to begin like we just did for the back panel and I am going to make a slip knot real quick and Tighten, and now for row number one, you're going to chain 17. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and that's it. Now you're going to uh, make a bobble stitch in the second chain from hook, and then you're going to single in the next stitch, and you're just going to repeat that for row number one. So to begin, your loop on your hook, once again, does not come as a chain. You're going to skip the first chain. You're going to skip the first chain, and then you're going to go into the second chain. And so what you do is you just yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops, and then you're going to, instead of finishing off like a normal double crochet would, you're going to um, insert into that same stitch and do the exact same thing. So we have two. Now you're going to do it two more times. So a total of four, I'll call them unfinished double crochets into the very, into one chain, into the same chain. Um, and now you should have five loops on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. And then you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. So I'm going to do that one more time really slowly on camera and then I'll let you finish this um, row. So you're going to yarn over, insert into the first stitch, yarn pull through, yarn pull through two loops, and then you're going to do that a total of th uh, three more times, so a total of four times. So you're just going to yarn over, insert into the same chain, yarn pull through, yarn pull through two, and you're going to do that two more times. So it's basically almost a double crochet, but just not completed. And then you're gonna have five loops on your hook and you're just gonna yarn pull through all five loops and you're gonna single crochet in the next stitch. Now with this row, make sure you do not skip a chain because you'll notice that at the end. So I'm just going to make a bobble in the next stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and you should end with a single crochet in the very last stitch. So it'll be bobble in the second to last stitch and then single crochet in the last chain. And so now I'm going to finish row number one and I'll meet you back. Okay, so I just finished row number one and now I highly recommend counting your stitches just to make sure you have, you should have 16 stitches for row number one and or eight bobbles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to now chain two and turn my work. And for row number two, you're going to double uh, do three double crochets into the first stitch. Then you're going to uh, double crochet in each stitch across and then you're going to do three double crochets into the last stitch. So you're just going to complete exactly that for row number one. And I'll meet you back once you are done with row, uh, excuse me. And I'll meet you back once you are done with row number two. So three double crochets, double crochet across, and then three double crochets in the last stitch. All right, so I just finished row number two and you should have 20 stitches. And now for row number three and four, you're going to chain two, turn your work, and double crochet in each stitch across. And you should have 20 stitches for rows two, 
well we just finished row two and now three and four you should have 20 stitches and so I'm just going to double crochet for the next two rows and I'll meet you right back all right so as you can see I just finished rows three and four and we just double crochet in each stitch across and now for row number five you're going to chain one and turn your work and you're going to make a bobble stitch in the first stitch and then you're going to single crochet in the next stitch so you're going to make a bobble and remember that this is a four um, a four double crochet or whatever you want to call it bobble so we do four stitches into one stitch like that and now we're going to yarn over and pull through all four loops or all five loops on your hook you should have five loops and then you're going to single crochet in the next stitch and you're just going to do that in each stitch across and you should end up with a total of 20 stitches. Alright so I just finished row number five and you can see we have some nice bobbles here and now for row number six you're going to chain two, turn your work and you're going to do three double crochet increase into the first stitch then you're going to double crochet across and then you're going to do three double crochets into the last stitch and you should have 24 stitches at the end of row six and I'll meet you back. Alright so I just finished row number six and you should have 24 stitches like I already mentioned before and now for rows number seven and eight you're just going to double chain two, turn and double crochet in each stitch across and you should of course have 24 stitches. Alright, so I just finished row number seven and eight, and this is what it is looking like. And now I'm going to chain two, or chain one, excuse me, and turn my work. And for row number nine, you're just going to do a bobble in the first stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch, and you're just going to repeat that. And you should have 12 bobbles or 24 stitches. So just bobble in the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, and then you should end with a bobble and a single crochet in the last two stitches. So I'm going to complete row number nine and I'll meet you back. Alrighty, I just finished um, row number nine and now I'm going to chain two and turn my work. And for row number 10 and 11, you're going to double crochet in each stitch across. So just double crochet in each stitch across and you should have 24 stitches. All right, so I just finished rows number 10 and 11, and as you can see, we kind of are doing our, so we did increases to make it kind of go out and now we're kind of at the like the level point and then we're going to start going in and start decreasing so now for row number 12 you're going to chain two and turn your work and you're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches and then you're going to double crochet in the next 18 stitches and then you're going to double crochet three together in the last three stitches so just double crochet three together to begin with double crochet in each stitch across and then double crochet three together in the last three stitches and you should have 20 stitches at the end of row 12 and I'll meet you back there. All right so I just finished row number 12 and you should have 20 stitches like I just mentioned before and now you're going to chain one and turn your work and for row 13 you're going to make a bobble stitch in the first stitch and single crochet in the next stitch and you're just going to do that in each stitch across so I'll meet you back at the end of row number 13. Okie dokie so I just finished row number uh, 13 and now for row number 14 you're just going to chain two and turn your work and you're just going to double crochet in each stitch across so I'll meet you back at the end of row number 14 all right so I just finished row number 14 and now for row number 15 and 16 you're just going to chain two turn your work you're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches then you're going to double crochet across and then you're going to double crochet three together in the last two stitches so do that for rows 15 and 16 and you should end up with 12 rows, uh, 12 stitches at the end of row number 16. Alright, so I just finished row number 16. So we did, just a little recap, we did a bobble row, then we did one just plain um, double crochet row, then we did two decrease rows and that's just what I just did. So I just finished two decrease rows, um, which when with, with <laughs> I did three double crochet decrease, double crochet across and then three double crochet decrease on so basically decreases on both on the edges now for row number 17 you're going to chain one and turn your work okay so for row number 17 what you're going to do is you're just it's a bobble row bobble single crochet but what you're going to do is if you want to you can add i'm sorry that this isn't finished but this is the finished front panel in my wet yarn and so you can add an eye here so what I did is I did let's see I did um, so I was going across like this I did two bobbles and then the third bobble I did um, just black yarn and then I did 
two, uh, three bobbles more. So then it goes like this. And so then what you do is then when you put your back panel to it or on it, I'm just pretending, just go with me for a minute. So then when you put your back panel on, then you normally have the, um, the hanger right on this side so that it hangs like this. Now, if you want, so if you want your stocking hanging from this side, you, um, from the left side, then you hang it like this. Then if you want your stocking hanging from the right side, what you do is you, in, you, um, do three bobbles, and then in the fourth bobble, you make, um, you make it black. So then you would have it hanging, um, so it would be like right here. It'd be on this one, and then you could hang it from this side, if that makes sense. So that is what I recommend. Um, I can show you this a little bit more in a little bit, but you are going to want to hang. Basically, you'll want it to lay like this and hang like this. And you'll, so you want it to be on the top right there. Or you can flip this around and do it in the fourth bobble and then have it hanging from the right side. So I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry I probably just confused you. But um, if, once you make one, you'll really get the hang of it. So what I'm going to do is I personally like to um, have mine hanging from the left side, so this side. And so I'm going to do bo um, a bobble stitch in the first two, and then I'm going to make it black yarn for the next bobble, and then um, bobble in the last three, or make three more bobbles on this side. So I'm going to begin by making two bobbles, then I'll meet you back to make the black eye bobble, and then I will continue. Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm, I, don't, I hope I'm making sense with this. So I just did my first two bobbles, and now you're going to grab your black yarn. Now, if you're left-handed or right-handed originally, this is also going to play a factor. So if you're right-handed, um, I'm not right-handed. I am just I just invert my videos so that I have a left-handed and right-handed version. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I hope it does. So if you're right-handed, then you're just going to be crocheting your first two bobbles and then your third bobble. Um, yeah, so let me just make it and then I'll show you kind of, I'll kind of give you some more examples. So what you're going to want to do if you're left-handed, okay, if you're right-handed, so look at this. So right here is our thing. And now if you're right-handed, you're going to have just done the first two bobbles here. And then you're going to do um, a black eye here. So that will automatically make it hang from the, um, this side from the right side and then if you do it like I'm doing it right now so that would mean then you do three bobbles a black yarn eye and then two bobbles then it's going to hang from the left side so I'm sorry <laughs> it's kind of confusing because just with different whether you're right-handed or left-handed and just all that thing all those things but um, it will make it'll definitely make sense once you have completed this so I'm just going to keep going so okay so we just finished um, two bobbles and now we did one single I almost completed a single crochet so I'm just going to so we did a bobble single crochet bobble and now I'm going to do a single crochet with you but we're not going to complete it so we're going to insert yarn over pull through then I'm going to grab my black yarn and yarn over and pull through the two loops to finish the, off the single crochet now what I personally like to do is I like to take these two tails so the red yarn I'm not sure this is the exact like correct way to do it this is just how I do it so don't worry if you want to try doing it in a different way so I like to take them instead of having them face out I bring them inside and then I grab my working black yarn and then I just make a bobble in the next stitch so right here into this stitch I'm just going to make a regular bobble stitch and you can see I have four. Now I'm going to, instead of yarning over and pulling through with the black yarn, I'm going to drop the black yarn and you can cut it at this point. I leave it a little long so that I can um, come back and just do whatever I want to sew in the tails. And now I'm going to pick up my red working yarn and yarn over and pull through all five loops. 
So now you can grab your black tails and tighten so that it looks uh, like the other ones. And now I'm just going to single crochet in the next stitch like we normally would. And then you can just continue your bobble row like you normally would. So now you can see we have a black bobble right here. So that means it's going automatically here in my pattern. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is what it looks like from when you have a black on this side. And then if you want to do it just one stitch below, then you'll lay the other way. So I'm hoping this is making sense. I feel like I'm just confusing people, but um, if it doesn't make sense, I don't know. Um, so I'm just going to do now three more bobble stitches just to complete the row like we normally do. So bobble, single shade, bobble, single shade, bobble, single shade. And I'm going to meet you back at the end of row 17. Okie dokie. So I hope this is starting to possibly make sense. I don't know if it is, but I'm hoping it is. So you can see right here is where the bobble is going to be. So it's going to be laying like this. And the point is going to be on this side right here. And then this is where um, the top is going to be. So then if you wanted it like this, what you'd want um, on like this when you lay it flat, you're going to want to do right here the black bobble on this bobble instead of the second bobble. So I'm hoping this makes sense. If not, don't worry. It'll make sense once you finish it. Um, now for row number 18, you're going to chain, turn, chain two and turn, and you're going to double crochet three together in the first three stitches. So one, two, and three over the first three stitches. So double crochet three together in the first three, over the first two stitches. Now you're going to double crochet in the next six stitches. Two, three, four, five. And I'm just working into that black stitch just like I normally would and six. And then I'm going to double crochet three together in the remaining three stitches. So basically we're decreasing there. Now you should have eight stitches for row 18 and now you're going to, for row 19, chain two, turn your work. You're going to double crochet three together over the first three stitches. And then you're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One and two, and then you're going to double crochet three together over the last three stitches. And now you're going to yarn over, or chain two, turn your work, and you're going to double crochet four together over the all four stitches. So you're just going to basically do the exact same thing. So that's normally our double crochet three decrease over the three stitches, and you're just going to do that. Um, you're just going to do another half stitch. And you're just going to yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook. And there is your adorable little fish. Now I'm going to, you're not going to want to cut your yarn. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to grab your back panel. So this is my back panel that we made earlier to begin the video. And you're going to grab your front panel. And we're going to now sew these two together. So now at this point, if you have the eye you want, um, if you have the eye going, uh, with two bobbles going up, so you want the eye going up, kind of higher than the bottom side, and then you're going to have the, um, the hanger thing on that side. So, as you can see, this is what it looks like, and here's my little hanger thing, and that is what it's going to look like. Oh, I should have maybe shown you here. Here is a picture of the um, stocking. So when it's hanging, it goes like this and it's like that. Um, and then, so that is what you want to do if you want it hanging from this side. And then if you want it hanging from the other side, what you do is you put the eye one stitch up and then hang the hanger from this side and then move the fin obviously. So you're going to crochet the front and back panels together by, you're going to begin by chaining one and now you're going to basically two single crochet into each um, stitch, do two single crochets into each stitch. So I'm going to begin by inserting right here and right here onto my both panels and pulling through and then I'm going to do that one more time on the same row so but on a different stitch so let me let me just bring this a little closer so 
you can see this is one row right here. And you can see that there's kind of two spots that we can work into. So we're going to work into the first spot here, and then we're going to kind of work into a, a lower spot on the same row. So the double crochet row is kind of a long row, and so we're just going to work two stitches into do two different spots. So one into the top of the double crochets, or yeah, and then one into kind of the bottom area of the double crochets. And now, let's see, so I'm going to just finish like this. And you're just going to double crochet, or single crochet, excuse me, ha, ah, my brain is going crazy. Um, you're just going to single crochet going into each stitch. And the main goal is to make it look even. I had 30, about 38 stitches um, from here to here where we, um, where the faux fur meets. And then I'll meet you back right here once we join, or with the faux fur. So the goal is just to make it look even, and then I'll meet you right here at the corner of the um, faux fur. Okie dokie, so I just came to the corner, and now what you're gonna do is you're going to insert into the first chain right here where we did our bobble into, so the chain right there, and then I'm going to insert into the chain of the back panel where we worked our uh, faux fur into, and I'm just going to make one single crochet. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to work one more single crochet, but you're just gonna go into only the front panel, so only into the bobble right there. And we're not gonna work into the back panel anymore for the top, the top of this chain. And so that way we all have an opening to be able to put whatever um, gifts or whatever you want in for your little cat. So I'm going to um, just single crochet across these chains going into the double crochet part and into the single crochet part. So the double, or the, the bobble part and the single crochet chain where we did those. And now I'm going to work to the other side and then we're basically going to do the exact same thing. So let me just work on with it real quick on camera and then I'll show you what to do, what exactly to do for once we reach the other side. So you can see it really adds a nice, kind of a really nice finishing polish look. I'm going to now go into there and now here's the last chain. So I'm just going to make one single crochet like we did on this side. And then I'm going to insert my hook back into that last chain. Then I'm going to find the last chain right here. And I'm going to insert my hook into the last chain there. And then we're just going to make a single crochet. Now I like to try to get the faux fur yarn out of it so that it doesn't look extra weird. And I'm just going to make a single crochet like you normally would. So we just went into the front and back panel there. And now I'm just going to um, single crochet going into each um, kind of area that you can. And then I'll meet you back once I reach the point where we begun and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, and then I like to just kind of do two single crochets kind of into the same spot, just so it gives a nice point. Now I'm going to cut my yarn, and your basically your fish is basically done. Now the next thing that we can do is we're gonna make the fin, and so then we'll sew it onto the fish. So this is what it is looking like. It's looking so, so nice, I think. And now, what we're gonna do is we're going to make the fin. So to do that, you're going to grab your yarn. Now, you, there is also an option in my pattern to make a bow like we did for the dog bone stocking right here. Um, and you can do that if you want. And if you want to do that, you can just go check out the blog post. But my favorite option is a fin. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so now we're gonna make the fin and um, if you wanted to make the bobbles, I think I've already mentioned this, but if you want to make the bobbles, you are welcome to. You can go to my dog bone stocking video and just to end and I'll show you how to make the exact same thing. Or you can just go check out my cat stocking blog post or you can purchase the ad free PDF. Okay, so to make the fin, we're going to grab your red yarn and your 5.5mm um, hook again and you're going to chain 11. So and once again, turning chains do not count as a stitch. We are going to chain 11, one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let me double check that you count that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Perfect. So you're getting chain eleven, and now you're going to slip stitch in the first stitch. Uh, so slip stitch in the first three stitches. So you're going to skip the first chain uh, loop on your hook. So the loop on your hook does not count as a chain. You're going to skip the first chain. You're going to insert into the second chain from hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through and then pull through. That's what st slip stitch is. And I'm just going to do that two more times. So you're going to slip stitch in the first three stitches total. So I just did three slip stitches in the first three chains. Now you're going to single crochet in the next two chains. One and two. And now you're going to half double crochet in the next two chains. And then you're going to double crochet in the last three chains. So we're just kind of doing like, we're making it kind of an angle, if that makes sense. So we're getting smaller to larger. And that's what it should look like. Now you're going to, you should have 10 uh, stitches. Now you're going to chain two and turn your work and you're going to double crochet in the first three stitches. You're basically going to just do the exact same thing in the reverse. So double crochet in the first three stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches. I'm just going to try to kind of crochet a little fast so the video doesn't get super long. Single crochet in the next two stitches. So half double crochet, or double crochet three, half double crochet two, single crochet two, and then slip stitch back into those three, um, slip stitch three into those three stitches, slip stitches of the previous row. Now it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes to find where to slip stitch, but just kind of make up a spot if you can't get it quite where you want it. So I'm just going to go into there like that. And you can see that is what it is looking like. Now you're going to chain one and turn your work and you're going to make a bobble in the first stitch single crochet in the next stitch and you're just going to repeat that so you should have five bobbles so i'm just going to insert into the um slip stitch and you're just going to kind of try to find to make a kind of kind of try to make a spot to go into and i'm just going to do this off camera real quick because it'll take a little bit uh, a minute or two and then i'll meet you back once i have finished row number three all right so as you can see we just completed our bobble row i think it just is so cute i love that that's my favorite row i think um now i'm going to chain two and turn my work and you're going to double crochet in the first three stitches half double crochet in the next two stitches single crochet in the next two stitches and then slip stitch in the last three stitches so just double crochet in the first three stitches i'm half double crochet in the next two stitches then i'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches and then i'm going to slip stitch into the last three stitches you kind of want to do your slip stitches decently loose so that you'll be able to work into the next time if you do them too tight it'll be extremely hard extra hard okay so now i'm going to chain one and turn my work and you're going to once again slip stitch into the first two uh, three stitches so you kind of try to do it as loose as you can so that it just makes it easier to go into them later. Now I'm going to single crochet in the next two stitches, half double crochet in the next two stitches, and then I'm going to double crochet in the last three stitches. Uh, I know this is kind of a bit of a weird pattern, but it, it makes a really cute or at least it's a very weird fin, but at least it turns out really cute, so don't worry. Um, now you're going to, basically you just finished your fin, now what you're going to do is you're going to kind of do an edging around it. So to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to chain one and turn your work, and then you're going to single crochet down the right and left side, but you're not going to single crochet across the top. So you're just going to single crochet in each stitch, and you're basically just going around, so you're going to go around, going around like this, and then you're just not going to crochet across the top, if that makes sense. So we're going to go here and here, and then we're just not going to go on this side right here where my finger's touching. So I'm just now going into my where my slip stitches were. And 
I kind of like to do when I reach the bottom of this I like to do kind of um, a single crochet three together just along the bottom just to kind of bring it all together and make it look more pointy like that and then I'm just going to keep a go on on up the other side So this is what it should look like at this point. And I'm just going to continue going up this side now. On So we're basically working into the chains. And I'm coming to my last chain. And so now you're not going to work across the top and you're just going to cut your yarn and tie off. Now I'm going to leave myself a bit of a long tail so that I can sew this onto the fish. So I'm going to give myself a nice long tail and tie off. Now this is optional but I really felt like it really added a cute um, effect. So you can just put it onto your fish how it is or what I loved doing is I liked to put faux fur along this edge not across the top once again, but just along this edge so that it just kind of adds um, some definition. So all you do to do that is you're just going to insert your um, hook into the first single crochet on the side of your fin and then you're just going to single crochet around the edge of the fin. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go right back into where we just tied off. So right here and I'm going to go backward. now. One tip is that if you, when you're using faux fur, if you have the back facing, um, facing up or facing out, that's actually better than having, normally like you want the inside of your work facing, anyway, just insert your hook and make sure you're looking right now at the back side. So insert your hook like this. And now we are going to pull the yarn through, chain one, and you're just gonna single crochet down this side. So just single crochet in each stitch and I'm going to just meet you back at this side and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay so as you can see we are not going across the top but I just went along this edge. Now I'm going to cut, oops, grab the, there we go, I'm going to cut the faux fur yarn and I am going to tie off and now your fin is officially completed. Now um, I'm going to have you weave in your ends and then I'll meet you right back and then I'll show you how to um, whip stitch this onto the fish. Okay so as you can see I um, tied in my tails and now I just have this long strand left. Now what I have written down in my pattern is that you want to go you want to count up from the bottom of your fish. So you first want to make sure that your eye is where you want it. So you want your eye being above the middle, if that makes sense. And so right now I'm looking at my fish. And what you're going to do is you're going to count up um, the fifth bobble. So one, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to count between the, so the, between the fifth and sixth bobble. So right here, we're going to put on actually one, two, three, four, five, here we go. Between the fifth and sixth bobble right here, we're gonna put on the, um, place the fin. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna kinda wanna roughly put this between the two bobbles on the other side. So we're one, two, three, so it's on the third bobble row. I hope you guys can see this. It's on the third bobble row. So one, two, three, four, five, there, third bobble row, and it's between the fifth and sixth bobble from the bottom, counting up. So now what you're gonna do is, this is gonna be really hard to show on camera, but I'm just gonna try. So you're going to just whip stitch this on. This on, so just go into a little bit of the, and you wanna, when you go into the stocking panel, you wanna only go into the front panel. So that's why my hand is in here, so that I'm only going into the front panel. Otherwise you close, otherwise if you go into the back panel too, then it'll just make it basically non-functional. Um, so I'm just doing my little whip stitching. And 
you're just going to insert there and I'm just going to continue this and then you have completed your stocking. So congratulations on completing your stocking and I would love to um, see any pictures that you have. So make sure to tag me when you're done and I'm just going to finish this up and then I am done. All right, so here is your completed stocking. You have completely finished your stocking and so yeah. Thank you so much for making this super fun crochet cat stocking along with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I make a new video on Fridays and I'd love to see you there. And don't forget, you can also check out the um, ad-free PDF version available on my Etsy site and my pattern site on my website. And you can also check out the free blog post for this small stocking. And so thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!